my flow drumsticks, a snare, and welcome. In today's video, I will be showing you how to make color base, which is actually quite exciting because this summer I'm planning on finishing a total of four color base videos showing you all techniques that I know of and that I've prepared throughout, I think these last three years with some really advanced techniques later on and some really basic techniques in this video, both for beginners and for more advanced producers. <laughs> so before I get into that, my name is Snare. I'm a music producer and sound designer and every Everything you want me to be, baby. I've been doing music for soon to be five years actually, mainly video game music and such, but also dubstep and a lot of bass music and orchestral stuff and obviously color bass. So with that said, I hope that today's video will teach you some cool stuff about how to do this genre if you have no experience with it. So this tutorial is oriented for beginners and more intermediate producers. And by that, I don't mean like complete beginners. I mean, people who haven't really done this genre before and aren't really used to trying new genres yet. Like maybe you just produce dubstep and you're trying to branch out a little bit. Then this tutorial is going to be for you. It implies that you know basics of your DAW, EQs and and compressors and stuff like that and how to actually sound design a little bit basic stuff for more intermediate producers who already know how to produce a lot of genres and how to branch out this can actually just help you kickstart your journey with color base <laughs> So for this tutorial, you're going to need a capable DAW. So don't come in here with LMMS. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Or am I? I'm not really kidding, but I'm kidding. Don't worry. <laughs> and you need some sort of bass synths and effects or sample packs and such. You basically need to have the basics. With that said, let's talk a little bit about the theory of color bass. If you don't know, color bass is a pretty old genre as far as I know, and it was created by Chime. It's basically dubstep, but the basses themselves are actually playing harmonies. So not melody, specifically harmony, and it's basically layered with the original basses. It sounds really wide, sort of like you heard in the intro section where I played a few examples of what I'll show you in this video. So let me show you a few of the bases by themselves just so you get an understanding of how it sounds. <sighs> The techniques that I'll be showing in this video are very basic and they're common knowledge for all color based producers. These are things that you might already know how to do. So my video might just help you sort of conceptualize it better or just fixate it in your mind. The first one that I'll be showing you will be vocoder using Fruity Vocodex. You can use any vocoder you'll see in that section. Next up will be convolution. So any convolver will be good for you. I'll be using the kilohertz one, but you can use the Fruity one, the Ableton one or whatever. The first Third one will be designing bases from chords. So you will need a synth and a bass and you'll sort of need to know some basic sound design and automation knowledge. And lastly, the easiest is Pitchmap, which is a paid plugin, but you can get it in other ways. So if you want to, you can use that as well. It's the easiest one. The video is going to be split in chapters, so it's going to be easy for you to navigate it. So yeah, with that said, let's just jump right into the video. There's a lot to cover. Using a vocoder. Alright, 
and we're inside of FL Studio now. And I will show you the first technique, which is using a vocoder to make color base. Now, this I think is by far the most versatile technique and simply because it has so much you can do with it and it's somewhat easy to use and has a lot of control. That being said, there are a few traps you can fall in and I'll be showing you how to do it correctly and how to approach this method in a way that will lend you the most quality and the tastiest, tastiest bases. So starting off, like all dubstep songs, you're going to need a bass loop. This is mine. Secondly, you're going to need a chord progression in the same key as your bass, obviously. This is from Cymatics. It's some, it's called MIDI Essentials. It's a free pack and I just took it and put it in here so we can start playing around directly. So I'm just going to drop this inside of my playlist. And what you want to do, you want to have a chord progression that sort of follows your bass. And I thought this was pretty good. What I'm going to do to it though, I'm going to remove this melody because I don't need it. And I'm just going to extend this. So it's actually playing all the notes sustained. And you're going to see that that's pretty important. Give me a second and I'll adjust it so it actually follows the bass loop properly and then I'll be back. All right, and here is our final loop. It just basically follows the rhythm of the bass loop. So that's pretty good. And now that I've got it, I'm going to need some sort of melodic synth that sustains to layer on top of the space. So I'm going to load up a face plant. And if you don't have bass plant, you can use any other synth. You can legit use citrus or the triple oscillator. It works really well with just simple shapes too. And I'll load up a saw and I'll just keep it the way it is. I'll copy my melody on top of this and I'll route everything to mixer tracks. So the first one is going to be raw bass. Second one is raw chords. Right now, it sucks ass. That's fine, because I'm going to turn them down a bit so they're not super loud. And I'm going to route them both like this to a new track. Now, it's important that you actually sidechain route to them because that just means that you won't have any spillage through your vocoded signal. So I'm going to call this vocal layer. And this is going to be my vocoder sound. So I'm going to load up the fruity vocodex which you can get from the image line site, but it sort of costs. You can use any vocoder though. It's just that this one specifically actually has a very special sound to it. It's hard to describe, but it's a lot, it's a lot nicer. It's very lively and very interesting. And especially for a genre that is so oriented on sound design, this is amazing. So no matter what vocoder you use, you will have two signals going into it, a modulator and a carrier. For color bass specifically, the modulator is going to be your bass and the carrier are going to be the chords. And as the name implies, the modulator is the sound that you imitate. You take the shape of the modulator and you apply it onto the carrier, which is the chords. You will hear in a second what's happening, but none of the modulator is actually being heard. It's just the carrier being modulated, being equalized to sound like the carrier. So what I did was I made the first one the modulator. As you can see here, it says mod and the second one the carrier. And in here, I move the high pass down and the low pass up. This basically means that the sound is not dampened or weakened in any way. Next, I'm going to make this fretted and draft so it doesn't actually consume too much of my CPU because in a real project, you would have multiple vocoders and it could end up making your project lag a bit, especially if you're on a laptop or on a lower end computer. Now, for me, that's not a problem. I, I have a pretty good computer, but I'm just telling you this. Plus, it sounds pretty good this way, too. So I'm going to play it just so you hear how it sounds. Jump, jump, jump. 
and you can hear it has this beautiful glassy tone to it and it actually plays the melody and it sounds just like the bass. So to continue adjusting this, you can actually change a few of the parameters here. Vocoder specifically has this order. It basically changes the way the modulator affects the carrier, or better said, the way the vocoder reacts to the modulator's input. So if I make it like this, So I'm pretty sure the way this works is it affects the way singular peaks are worked inside of Vocodex. And in that sense, making it to the right is going to make it more squelchy because the peaks are not going to be as leveled. And to the left, it's going to level them up a bit more, meaning that it's going to sound a bit flatter and a bit more saw textured. I'm going to keep it to the right because I really love the squelch. And I'm going to change the bands here. The amount of bands basically affects the resolution of the sound. Now, truthfully speaking, the bands actually don't necessarily make it sound better. You can have less bands and it's going to sound cool. You can have more bands and it may sound bad. It's your choice, really. More bands generally is going to make it sound wetter and less bands is going to make it sound more waterish. But it also depends on the other options that you have enabled. Alrighty, so let's play it like this. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Next up, we can change the bandwidth. So the way this works is the sound, the carrier is being split into a bunch of little band passes. These band passes are placed one next to the other, and basically they're taking each the volume of the respective frequency from the modulator. What this means is that each band pass can be made wider or narrower, or can be pitched separately from each other. That's what makes vocoder so special because it allows you to control each band pass individually. Thing which I will not be getting into because it's really complicated and it takes a lot of fiddling around with. What I will be showing you is the bandwidth and the formant, quote unquote, formant shifter. So let's make the bandwidth bigger and you're going to notice that it's going to phase a lot. And this is the smallest bandwidth right here, which makes it sound very crystal like. If I move the bands down, you're going to hear. Personally, I really like it at 75%. It's a really good point because it's it basically sounds squelchy enough, but it also doesn't phase and it's also not too thin. It's a very fine line and you can play around with it because after vocoding the sound, we can process it and we can get some even cooler tones out of it. But for me, for this, I want to keep it somewhat simple. And I think this sounds really good right out of the box. Next up, we have the bandwidth multiplier, which as it sounds, it basically multiplies this bandwidth by a certain X amount. So as you can hear, having it at times four makes it more flat and having it at times 0.25 makes it a bit squelchier. Now, I generally like keeping it at normal because I don't really like neither of the feelings with this specific option but you can still use it and get some cool stuff out of it. So so as you can hear, it basically flattens it the exact same way that the order would do. Next up, we have the quote unquote formant shifter. And what this does is it basically takes all of these band passes and moves their cutoffs up or down respectively. So here you can see that it's actually in semitones, which is really useful for us. And be careful because moving it to like a random amount will sort of make it out of tune. So if I move it to this. And this is really cool. And it's also an option inside of this menu where you can do it per bit of the sound. But as I said, I'm not going to cover that. Lastly, inside of vocoder, I think the most interesting, I would say part of this is this envelope. The way the vocoder works is each band pass has a envelope tied to it, which is being triggered by the modulator. So after it's being triggered and it does its volume automation, it will have a little bit of release. It also can have a bit of attack, so it swells into the modulation. It can also have hold. 
So let's say I want a lot of release. As you can see, bringing up the release actually makes it sound sort of reverby, and it's really cool. Bringing up the attack is going to make it sound interesting too. So it's very relaxed, very chill. And the hold, I mean... You can hear what it does. It just holds each uh, singular band for a bit longer than it's supposed to be. Now there's a little option here, which I want to, to keep in mind, which is called minimum times. And turning this off right now, it's, it's by nature on, but it's displayed as off for some reason. But turning it on basically makes it so whenever you turn these to as little as possible, it will make it so it doesn't distort. When you turn it off, it will actually turn it to unsafe times and it will basically start doing weird distortion stuff that sounds a little bit like bit crushing. So let me show you this. And that's what it does. It's pretty crazy, actually. I'm not going to be using it, but it's a really strong tool for sound design. And one of my friends discovered this and that is Technocosm and he showed it to me. So credit to him. There is also a sound geyser option here. I personally don't do anything to it because it doesn't really do much. It's basically adding a bit of sound geyser on the sound itself, which could be cool if you if you like playing with sound geyser. I personally don't like sound geyser, so I just leave it the way it is. You can turn it off too or you can turn it higher. We're done with vocoder and now on top of this layer we can add effects and stuff to basically make it sound wide or make it be high pass or have certain filtering types so i want to see a little bit of a snapshot of the finished sound before i go on with processing this vocoder layer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my raw bass i'm going to route it into a new mixer slot and i'm going to call this bass and now i basically have my vocoded layer and my bass layer now you might be saying okay so i'm not just going to use the vocoded layer by itself no, adding the bass layer on top is basically going to give it the original tone of the sound and it's going to allow you to basically mix in the vocoder as much as you want. We're going to hear in a second that it's the secret to making those good color bases that everyone has. So let's select both of these by pressing Control Shift and then let's route them to a single track and play them. And as you can hear, it's really tasty now. So, seeing how this is made, I want to think a little bit about how I want to spatialize the bass itself. One cool thing about color bass is that because the bass is made out of two layers and one of them is melodic, you can actually play around with the stereo field and make the vocoded layer really wide using a hoss or a chorus, or even reverb it or delay it or do cool sound design stuff to it. So right now, I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to put a chorus on top of it. I'm going to load up a snap heap from Kilohertz, which you don't need to have. It's just that I like using it because it allows me to modulate stuff. I'm going to load up a chorus. You can use any chorus you like. You can also use just a hoss, which I'll show you in a second. And it will make it really wide. So let's play this. And it sounds amazing. Let's just hear it without the chorus. That is really tasty and it's just a chorus. I legit changed nothing about it, just a bit of the mix right now. What you can also play around with is delays, like I said. With that metallic feel or you can play around with a Haas. So this is a Haas.
And truth is, because this is a melodic layer, it actually doesn't matter that much that it's using a Haas because in the end, when you mono it, it's just dubstep. It doesn't really matter that it sounds a bit different because this is a sound design genre. You know, it's not like country or like jazz where it's really important that it sounds the same on all systems. This is a headbanging genre for nerds like me and like you because you're watching this tutorial, you goddamn nerd. There's other stuff you can add on it. Like you can compress it separately and stuff. You can add filters, flangers really cool shit that you can do and the basic premise of color base really is that you know that the color layer and the base layer need to be separated and need to be viewed a bit differently from each other the base layer can be kept the way it is but the vocal layer you can do whatever you want with it and that's not just for the vocoder technique this is for all techniques I set a pitch map. Lastly, now that you made your bass, you can compress it together. I'm going to use an OTT. I like turning these two down a bit and the depth. And now that you made your sound, you can play around with the vocoder itself. And not only that, but you can actually play with the synth itself and do interesting stuff to it. So for example, I could have a low pass on it and just filter that. So. And that's it. That's your color base. And now it's just down to you to actually add your drums and stuff like that. This genre works with basically anything that dubstep does. Just you need the melodic layer. And that's really cool about it. And you can do a lot of creative stuff. But that's it for this technique. We're going to move now to the second technique. Using convolution reverb. Alrighty. And here we are with the second technique that is using convolution reverb. What's cool about convolution is that it basically lets you do anything you want with your melodic sound. The only downside is that it can sound a little bit weird and out of your control. And it's somewhat hard to change the tone of the bass. You're going to understand in a second. So first off, just like the vocoder, I'm going to have a bass. This is it. And it's a pretty simple bass loop, as you can hear. What I'm going to need for this is a chord stab. So here's my chord. It's a G sharp 7th, I'm pretty sure. What I'm going to do is load up a synthesizer. I'm not going to place that pattern on the mixer itself. Instead, I'm going to get some sort of something that has an interesting tone to it. You can actually go into presets. Uh, let's go in here and find something nice. This sounds pretty good. Right, and I'm gonna put my sound in here. What I'm going to do is without having it routed to any mixer slot, I'm going to load up an Edison and just click on input, record, and let it play out for a bit. And I'm just gonna cut this bit out. Like so I'm gonna cut this bit out because I don't really need it that, that much. I'm gonna fade it in a bit just so it doesn't sound too abrupt. Sounds perfect. I'm going to wrap my bass to one of the mixer slots like this. I'm going to call this raw bass. And I'm going to route it to a mixer slot, this time with the sound on. I'll call this conv. This is going to be the convolution layer. And let me just turn this down a bit. OK, and on here, I'm going to load a convolver. Now I'm going to be using the kilohertz convolver because I love the way it sounds, but you can use whatever you want. I'm going to next drop the sound into it. You can't really drop it directly from Edison, so you're going to have to drop it in your channel rack. And then from there, you're going to have to drop it in here. But now that we did, we basically have the convolved sound. So let's play this. And 
Heineken here has this magical texture that Convolver gives it. Also a bit of lack of control because it just keeps going as you can hear. So what I can do is fade it out and shorten it. And you can do this in basically any Convolver. And you can just play around with the sound basically. And that's my sound. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. There's also stretch options. It depends on your revolver what you're able to do in it. Uh, this one lets you actually switch through the sound as you can see and sample different bits of it, which is really cool. It lets you also fade in and out and stuff. It also has a feedback and tone and stretch, which I'll just show you the stretch real quick. So yeah, now we're going to approach this exactly the same way that we approached the vocoder. And that is we're going to route the raw bass into a different channel. We're going to route the convolution and the bass into a channel. And then we're going to process them together. So let's just hear the way they sound right now. Yeah, and now with this, I can basically process this convolved sound. So it's a bit more aggressive. The way I'm going to be achieving this higher mid tone that I want is by taking a compressor like this and on the high bands, I'm just going to boost it a bit. This is Maximus. If you have a different multiband compressor works, you can also use OTT. You can play around now with the sound. As you can see here, it's really tasty. And yet again, you have the control that you did with the vocoder. That is, you can add delays, you can add all sorts of cool stuff specifically on the convolution layer. So for example, if I so feel like it, I could add another chorus. I could also change the sound completely inside of the convolver for something else and I can make my own. And that's what's really crazy about it. The fact that you have so much control. The downside of this is the fact that if you want a different sound, you're going to have to get a new convolver every time. I mean that you can't have multiple chords being played unless you did some, I don't know, some sampling and stuff, which is just like, you know, a bit of an effort. But yeah, it's still a really good technique and it's really cool and you can use it for your songs and it's going to sound really good. It's just that you need to sort of weigh your options with this. But that's it for this technique. Let's move on to the next one. Designing the bases from chords. And here we are with technique number three, which is a pretty cool one. It is layering. Now, 
This is something that not many people do, at least from what I've seen. And it's a pretty strong technique and it lets you get some very different sounds from the usual convolution or vocoding type of color base. What this technique entails is that we make a synth, a, you know, a synth that plays the chords and we make it follow the bass in volume. And basically we modulate it so it sort of sounds like a bass and then we compress them together. So in a sense, it's sort of like the vocodex, but it's not necessarily stuck to following the shape of the bass. You can add on top of it. That's really cool. Now, the way this really would work would not be with like a pre-made bass and then adding a layer on top, but rather by making the bass itself out of those chords. Like you would make a very simple bass and then you would take the processing of that bass, all the filtering and stuff, and all of that automation, you would apply it on the chords, but in lesser amounts with a few adjustments. That's how I made like my Minecraft remix, which you heard play before this section. And it's a really cool technique because it lets you do some cool stuff with textures that you couldn't with other sounds. Like you heard in that one, there was like a really that saw underneath everything and it keeps that quality of the saw not like a vocoder that would sort of squish it up and that's why it's cool but for this one i'm just going to use this base and create my own layer on top and you're gonna see how it works so i have the base here <laughs> Really cool. And I have the chords here. They're from Cymatics, they again the same sample pack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them on top of here and make them actually follow the bass. So give me a second to do that. All right, and this is what I got. <laughs> That's pretty good. And now I'm going to load up a synthesizer. So let's take a simple saw for now. Let's copy the chords. And let's route both of these two mixer slots. The first one is the bass. And what I'm going to do is inside of this chords mixer, I will load up a kilohertz snap heap and get an audio follower to actually modulate the volume. Okay, quick pause. I just need to say, please don't do this yourself. I'm gonna be honest, I did this because I was sort of excited because I just got my hands on the new faceplant update and I wanted to see how the audio follower worked. Bad idea. It's really warbly and it and it sounds interesting, but it's not good for this. Stick to automation. It will get you a lot better results. <laughs> That's all I got to say. So if I get an audio follower here and a gain, I can basically process my sound using an effects. Now, the way you could do this, if you don't have faceplant, you could just create like a modulation wheel with all of the stuff that you wanted to modulate. And then you just modulate it yourself to follow the bass. I've done that before too. It sounds a bit different, but I want to try it this way because faceplant actually got an update and it's pretty cool. So I'll route it in here, make it so it goes up to maximum volume following the bass. And what it needs is an actual audio input from this. So I'm going to route it there and set it to external. And give it a bit of gain. Right, like this. So now it's pretty good sounding. I'm gonna make the chords be an octave higher because they're a bit lower. Now. And I'm gonna turn this saw into a into a super saw because I want it to be sort of fat, you know.
And on this, we can add all sorts of cool effects to basically make it follow the base. So for example, let's add a filter. I will add a combs because these usually add really cool qualities to your sounds. All right, that's our sound. I'm going to OTT it to compress it and basically bring it to a nice even volume. Alright, and lastly, I'm going to just route both of these together so they can be processed. So I'm going to route this to this track only and this to this track only and ODT them. And on here, you can add other effects like the chorus that I mentioned before. Another cool thing is that you can color it using a convolver. So if I just get an amp sound. And you can hear how it sounds if I make it just a simple song. You can also play around with frequency shifters and stuff, anything that gives it like movement. And as you can hear, you've got a pretty cool chord stack. Now, in my opinion, at least this one doesn't sound as good because like I said, you need to make it from scratch, but you heard the preview and it's pretty cool. So yeah, let's move on to the last technique, which is also the easiest technique in my opinion. Using bitchmap. Alrighty, and we are here at the last technique, pitch map. This is one of the weirder ones because it legit doesn't require you to do anything outside of just loading pitch map on top of your sound, which is really interesting. It sort of feels like cheating, but there's some stuff you can do with it that, you know, makes it really cool and interesting. Now, I really like this technique because it does have some versatility. It sort of sounds same-ish at times, but you can do cool processing and stuff to it to make it really interesting. The way I would work with it would be to take base one shots and then a random through pitch map and use them that way in songs. Thing with this is you cannot use the original sound with the pitch map sound. So you don't have that dynamic of layering them, which is not a big problem. You can still do cool stuff with it. Instead, you can actually layer different pitch map layers on top of each other. Now, before I go on and show you what all of this means, pitch map is really expensive. So not everyone's going to have access with it, but this is by far the easiest way of doing it, of doing color base because it requires very minimal effort and it doesn't even require you to have a chord progression. So yeah, I've used it in a song before. I discovered some interesting stuff that you can do with it, but that's not for this tutorial. So let me show you what I do. So this is the clean bass. All right, and watch. So I'm going to route this to one of my mixer slots. I'm going to load up bitch map. And it looks a little bit 
you know, like it's a lot. It's a lot to go through. But as you just saw, you can actually hover over stuff to know what each one of them does. And it's not hard to do. So first of all, we select the key of our track, which this bass is an E. So I'll go E. And here you have a lot of scales. Generally, you just want the natural minor. Next, you're going to play with these knobs. So what you're going to do is this threshold here is going to basically tell it how to react to the incoming signal. And I'll play it in a second and you'll see what it does. Generally, you can pull it low so it actually reacts to more of the sound. The feel makes it sound more synthetic if you move it down and more like the original sound if you move it up. So I'm going to move it a bit up. And this is the knob that we really want to play around with. Purify. What this does is it basically makes the sound melodic. Now, you don't want to pull it up to 100. You want to pull it up to like 95 or something. There's a big difference between 95 and 100. And lastly, the Electrify, which basically it's sort of like an auto tune. If you know the speed of the auto tune and how fast it reacts, that's exactly what this does. Higher will make it react faster and lower will make it react slower. So I'll move it down to like 35. That's a good amount. And now let's just listen. Do I need to say anything else? <laughs> I mean, you can hear exactly what it does. To explain it in better, in better terms, first of all, you're going to notice that on the mixer slot here, it adds 100 milliseconds of latency. So we know that this is something that works with some weird Fourier transforms. What I think it does is it's like a frequency independent auto tune. By that, what I mean is it takes each frequency of the song, depending by the threshold, and it basically quantizes it to a certain note, to a certain key. That's why in the higher register, you can hear that a lot of the frequencies sound really weird and sound very auto tuned because everything, no matter if it's noise or if it's harmonic, it will quantize it. So now with this knowledge, and we know that it's basically an auto tune, we know what the feel does. The feel basically tells it how much of the noise it actually quantizes it into melodic. The purify is telling it how many of the frequencies to actually push into being quantized. And the electrify basically tells it how fast to quantize to a different note based on what it has. That's why when you pull the electrify up, it starts sounding very noisy and weird, like pressing random notes on a keyboard, but in a scale. So you can hear it's a really interesting tool, but there's more to it. The really cool aspect of it is that it's not just this, it's also these two little arrows that are very small, but they actually make a really big change. What they do is they actually change the quantized position of the scale. All right, pause real quick. I actually go on to explain this pretty wrong. So I'll just dub the sequence over to explain better. So what is happening is each frequency normally would be quantized to one of the positions that you see on pitch map itself. So any of those positions would be somewhere where a frequency would get quantized to. Meaning that, for example, A would have all of the frequencies that are closest to it. What would happen if we move the key down, so we moved it by a notch down, what it would do is it wouldn't quantize that note that is closest to A to A. Instead, it would quantize to a note lower than the A that you had, meaning that stuff sort of sounds switched up in different in tone, which leads to different sounds. What this means is that harmonically, you can get different quote unquote melodies slash chords out of your sounds. So let's move it down. <laughs> Thank you. 
And like that, you get a million different sounds. So that's it for this technique. Like that's all you need to know. Now, another thing to keep in mind is this is going to destroy your sub. It's going to make your high end sound really weird because a lot of the frequencies have the same quantized position. So they get stacked together and they get really loud. And in the high end, there's a lot of really dense frequencies and noise in 99% of the sounds, which all get quantized to one single position, which makes it have those really harsh harmonics, which you can pull down if you don't like them. So the way you work with this is not by just plopping it down on every sound you have, because this lags and adds a lot of latency. What you want to do is you want to have either a bus where you send all of your sounds into it and then have them be processed in there, or you actually render out every single bass by itself or a stem or something with this, and then you turn it off because I've had like three of them in a project and I just couldn't work because it was laggy and weird. But that's it for pitch map. And there's a cool technique you can do with it, which I'll show you in another video. It's very easy. And there's some other stuff you can play around with. You can play around with the tuning, which actually will change the sound. You can play around with these keys and layer different sounds that have different key position in the same key. The electrify is really interesting for different sounds. The purify is interesting for different sounds. You can hear what it does. Awesome. But yeah, that's it for this tutorial. Let's move on to the outro. Alrighty, and here we are at the end of the tutorial. <sighs> it's been quite a bit, right? I hope that you gathered something from this. Now, before I finish, let's talk a little bit about my future tutorials that I'm planning on doing, which you should definitely subscribe for if you're interested. Wink. There is a lot more ways to actually make color base than just the techniques that I showed you. One of those is morphing, something that I didn't even discuss in this one. You can have intrinsically melodic bases, for example. You can resample melodic content to turn it into a base. You can use resonators. There's a lot of stuff and it's really fun. So with that said, I am planning on covering this video basically, but more advanced in the next one. I'll be showing you, like I said, these techniques that I just mentioned. And I will also be covering some more advancements on the techniques that I showed you this way. So for example, for the vocoder, I will teach you how to do some more interesting modulations and such. I will teach you how to make melodic screen bases, sound designing with bitchmap on top of your sound. I will teach you some cool techniques for the convolution. So there's a lot to go through and it's going to be really enjoyable. So definitely keep in touch. With that said, I recommend that you exercise and you play a lot with what I showed you because that's the only way of getting better. Work outside of the box. Like don't keep doing the same things that make you comfortable. Actually do stuff that makes you uncomfortable. You're going to understand after a few years that all this time that you spend doing stuff that makes you uncomfortable, it will lead to you actually being comfortable with it <laughs> in a weird way. You'll notice that you'll be able to do stuff that you weren't able to do before. And that's amazing because that's how you become a good producer. I noticed that with me too, not to say that I'm amazing or anything like that, but I know I'm a good producer and it's specifically because I tried stuff that other people don't. I came out of my comfort zone and I flourished and you should try it too. So yeah, thank you for watching. I recommend you subscribe. I recommend you like this video. I recommend you share it with your friends and that you leave me a comment if you have anything to ask or anything to tell me that I didn't cover correctly or such. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day. Goodbye.